In a bit to add some more spice and flavour into the Formula 1 Grand Prix weekends, Formula 1 are now deciding to trial sprint qualifying on three different race weekends this year. We begin with Silverstone, then move on to Monza for the Italian Grand Prix and finally at the Brazilian Grand Prix at Interlagos. Well, that is subject to confirmation, of course. But there are many key questions that we have to answer regarding sprint qualifying. We've got to wonder, well, how does this thing work? Which teams and drivers may benefit it from the most? Second Secondly, well, who gets called the pole sitter now? Is it the person who wins the race or is it the one who actually qualifies first on Friday? All of this answered on this very video. But first, welcome to Pits to Podium. My name is Samuel Arora. And now that you're here, don't forget to subscribe to us because we've got some really kick-ass content coming up right here, ranging from stats reviews and data analysis all the way to race review podcasts and feature articles. So don't forget to do that. But now, let's get right down into it. So what is this sprint qualifying business all about? Well, the idea is quite simple. The idea is just to have more must-watch Formula 1 race sessions all throughout the weekend. Now you can actually deal with not watching free practice sessions on Friday and just end up watching qualifying on Saturday and the race on Sunday. But what this will do is add another must-watch race weekend session on Saturday in terms of the sprint qualifying. And this will mean that qualifying gets pushed up to Friday. I will explain the format in a second. But essentially, the idea is just so that more viewers can come in, more viewers can watch watch Formula 1 and we add a lot more context into the race weekend. Well now, instead of just having two practice sessions that we normally end up doing, things are going to be slightly different on a Friday. Here, we're only going to have one practice session. Things will be quite fun in this case and that will be followed by a traditional three-part qualifying session and I love it. And I love the fact that this will now eventually not determine the grid for the race weekend, the final race on Sunday, but it will do the same for the race on Saturday. This is going to be quite a lot of fun. Now, drivers only have one hour of practice before the qualifying session. Imagine how many mistakes that could lead to. But on Saturday, they will get one final hour to practice before we head to the first ever sprint race at Silverstone. 30 minutes, it's going to be a blast. The drivers will be fighting hard for that. And the order of that race determines the grid order for Sunday. But it raises a big question. So who is the pole sitter in this case? Well, now, because the driver who ends up scoring the fastest lap in qualifying and pole sitting has just been tied up together since eternity, we might get slightly confused here. But the pole sitter is actually going to be the one who wins the sprint qualifying race on Saturday. And yeah, basically, it's going to be the same. There's no going, there's going to be no prize awarded for qualifying first on Friday, just the pole position award for winning the Saturday race. And that will be the one that counts on your pole positions. So get to wondering, if this format was there for the last 10 odd years, how many pole positions would Lewis Hamilton have today? Bit of a tricky one, isn't it? But then it raises another question. So does the one who win the sprint race on Saturday get this win counted in their Grand Prix victories record? That we answer right now. Well, it's quite simple in this case. As I mentioned earlier on, if you win the sprint qualifying race on Saturday, you don't get this answered and you don't get this added up, I'm sorry, I mean to say, in your Grand Prix win tallies. It simply is a pole position. And yeah, like before, you'll be given the pole position trophy in Park Fermi. And they literally know, it means that there's no reward for qualifying first on Friday. Bit of a shame, I know, but I think it'll just raise the context. But why fight for it, you wonder? Why just fight for it if it doesn't add to your Grand Prix race tally? Well, it's quite simple. There are quite a few points. As you can see on the screen right now, three points for the winner, two points for the driver who finishes in second place, and one for the driver who finishes in third. Now, you might be saying, well, this isn't a lot. And eventually, there are some criticisms about that, which we shall answer in a couple of moments' time. But what this does is creates a big opportunity for many teams to gun for it, go for higher positions, and eventually start higher than they would normally do on one lap pace. I think it has the potential of being quite an exciting one. Oh. 
Well, park permit conditions are the conditions where the teams are not allowed to make any major changes onto their cars for the race weekend. Normally, this would happen at the start of qualifying one, and which means that any changes like adding parts to your car, changing front wings, trying something new, may not be allowed after first qualifying. But this is where sprint qualifying differs. You can make changes till the end of FP1. Again, for the Friday qualifying session, you can't make any changes. But Park Fermi actually reopens for free practice too, which happens on Saturday morning. It's a bit confusing to put it this way, but it's very simple. You can make changes in the first free practice session, not during this Friday's qualifying session. You can do that before the sprint race on Saturday, but you can't after that sprint race begins. Till then, the cars will be tied in and locked up all the way till the end of the weekend. Which means, well, if you've got damage, you can maybe change the parts, but you can't try new parts like new front wings, new barge boards, new aero devices, nothing of that sort. Only minor changes here and there. That is the way forward. Well, in terms of tyres though, normally we end up seeing teams being very constrained in terms of tyres right now. But sprint qualifying, well, things are rather different right here because now teams will actually be given a free run of tyres in the sprint race. For qualifying on Friday, they will essentially have five soft tyres tires that they can choose from and that is going to be frantic so gone is the rule basically which means that when you can actually qualify no what i mean to say is the rule where you qualify in the top 10 and the tires that you use for your q2 lap are the ones you start on that rule is gone that rule is vanished for the sprint race on saturday you can basically choose any tire of your choice and now you might be saying yeah some let's just going to be a soft tire fest right because that's going to be the faster one well sometimes we have seen many teams get faster pace on their mediums just because of how much better it could be on a 30 minute basis that is going to be quite a fun factor to watch out for and also in the race teams will now have a free choice of any two compounds it could be soft and medium could be medium and hard depends completely on them and how they have to make it work so essentially we might just see more diversity in terms of strategy because now even the teams in the top 10 can choose any tire that they want they're not constrained by that q2 rule anymore i think this can make for some very very interesting strategies and we should only wait and watch about that So, big question, who benefits the most from sprint qualifying on Saturday? Well, it presents a golden chance for many teams and drivers who actually are struggling with one lap pace to claim pole into Sunday. So, it could mean drivers like Sergio Perez, who has actually competed in 200 Grand Prix but has never got pole position. Maybe it could benefit him. Maybe he could have a very good race in 30 minutes and end up getting pole position for the race on Sunday. On paper, drivers like Yuki Tsunoda, Esteban Ocon and Carlos Sainz who have been performing better at race distances may actually be benefited by this one. And drivers like Charles Leclerc, drivers like George Russell and Daniel Ricciardo who have had great one lap pace but haven't been able to make things work in the race weekend, they might be actually on the wrong side of things. But that is only on paper. Since we have never seen F1 drivers drive with the target being only 30 minutes in the race, Instead of just 1 hour and 30 minutes, we might just see some more inspired performances. Remember, the goal here is different. You're not driving for 2 hours, you're only driving for 30 minutes. And so, there is no worry about tyre saving, no worry about fuel, any strategy, anything quite like that. The drivers can just go on for the attack. Really, this has a potential to be a game changer, especially when you consider that drivers only have 1 hour of practice instead of 2 before the sprint race. Crazy stuff right here. Well, it might be fairly game-changing on paper, but is, is sprint qualifying really the answer that Formula 1 is looking for? Is it really what can drive up the TV numbers big time and add a lot more context into the race weekend? Think twice, to be honest. Formula 1 teams seek efficiency in every single aspect of their operations, primarily in their racing. Now, I know it may sound like something that Autobot from Wally -E might say, but uncertainty is inefficient and sprint qualifying adds uncertainty. With the budget cap looming, the potential for damage for wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact might be something that worries teams. Now, yes, of course, teams will now be paid a $500,000 compensation for sprint racing to go out there and pay for all their damages and the extra cost of having a 30-minute race on three different race weekends. 
But still, you've got to wonder, money can buy you spare parts, but making them and getting them in the right condition for the right race weekend might take a lot of time. And time you can't buy in a situation like this one. Imagine the new front wing that Red Bull has got if it breaks off during sprint qualifying. For sure, you can pay and you can get another spare. But is it going to be of that same spec? Because normally, newer parts only come in very limited quantities. That is going to be such a fun factor all the way through. So many may approach it like a procession and will prefer not to take the extra risks in a situation like this one when the reward is just so limited. Points only for the top three. And when their race pace is not good enough, they will just get swallowed back in the strategy battle on Sunday. So really, what is there to play for? Why go ahead? Why go kamikaze on Saturday and try to get a very good qualifying position when many teams like an Alpha Tauri or a Ferrari or a McLaren are very unlikely to get those points? And if their pace is not good enough, they may just be artificially up ahead. On Sunday, a Mercedes or a Red Bull will catch up. This presents a very interesting situation and we've only got to wait and watch. In a way, it could just put the focus back on three-part qualifying session on Friday. And so the question arises, well, if it's just going to be a procession, if the focus is only on the Friday qualifying session, why do it then? Why go ahead and put so much money into it? Why trial this stuff? But again, the good thing is that all of this is just speculation. The beauty is that at this moment in time, your guess is as good as mine and also as good as those in the paddock. The best thing is that all of us can just wait and watch and see and enjoy as it comes. So, who benefits the most from it at Silverstone? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below and watch our British GP preview on Pits to Podium for a more detailed analysis on that for this race weekend. But folks, Thank you so much for watching and in case you liked this video, don't forget to leave a like and to share this video with your friends and family members who like watching Formula 1 and who might be keen about knowing what this sprint qualifying business is all about. So, thank you for watching, subscribe to Pitch to Podium and I shall see you for the British GB preview on Friday.